Good evening, everybody. Welcome. It's Ruth here at Artful Stampin. And today we're going to be doing a one sheet wonder. Welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, I'm very much into stamping because I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator for uh, in the UK. Sorry, <laughs> I was going to say for Stampin' Up! I already said that. Uh, yeah, so I'm in the UK, based in the UK. So if you want to shop with me, please do click on the links below. Click on shop and that will take you straight to my online shop. And I've been trying to do a new thing with um, Stampin' Up! have this facility that I can create pictures or, f or projects um, a file basically I can create a file with a picture of a project and then have listed all the products so after I do one of these what I tend to do is create one of those types of files and then put the link below with the uh, list of all the products that I used and you can actually just click on that link and if you're doing some shopping online you can just add everything to your basket and then take out the things that you've already got so it just makes shopping with me a bit easier so even if you don't want to use that facility if you want to just have a go and see what it's like please do that um so if you're watching this live with me now it won't obviously be there but later on it, it the facility should be there so hello everybody welcome we're going to just do some um nice bit of one sheet wonder stamping back to what ruth does best type stuff uh what ruth enjoys basically uh when i refer to one sheet wonders it's basically stamping your own piece of paper with gorgeous stamps to create your own papers. Now, in Stampin' Up! World, we call patterned paper designer series paper. And, I mean, in other, other companies, you know, they just call it scrapbooking paper, you know. So if you're coming from a non-Stampin' Up! world, you probably would call it scrapbooking paper. And often, us card makers do cut up those beautiful papers uh, to create you know lovely cards but sometimes it's nice to create our own patterned paper using stamps because Stampin' Up! primarily is a stamp company they produce lots of beautiful designs for us to use and it's really nice to find new ways of using them so welcome to my channel if you've not been here before if you have welcome back everybody it's lovely to see you i can see a few people here on the live and if you're watching on the replay do comment let me know uh, what you enjoyed about the video and what things you're going to be trying out for yourself so i mainly want to focus on the first frost because it is such a lovely stamp set and um, sometimes it doesn't get as much love as I think it should it should receive. Then the other stamp set I'm going to be looking at is Label Me Bold, which is this one here, and it's got some nice texture elements to it and some words. And I'm I'm thinking perhaps of even incorporating the words actually into the design rather than it being a complete afterthought. Um, you know, when you're making a card and you think, oh, who am I sending it to? Um, sometimes we, we, we think about it then at that point. So let's get you a bit closer. There we go. Just take note of where I need to put my... Because I'm going to be sitting down, so I just need to get the paper in the right place. So hello, April. Hello. Hi, Esther. You want to get to bed, do you? Right, so I grabbed out three coloured inks here. I've got Seaside Spray, Blue Bro Bushel and Pretty Peacock. Now these are current in colours. Stampin' Up! have in colours that they just have for a couple of years. Uh, they're the sort of fashionable colours as it were. And it just so happened I wanted to do blue on grey and these are the ones that kind of leapt out at me so um, if you don't have these colours then they are you could use other different ones so if you have Pacific Point perhaps or if you have the old Tranquil Tide then that would be a great one and then of course Barmy Blue you could have that instead of Seaside Spray. Let me just say a quick hello to the folks that are watching um, so hi Esther, Deborah, Rhonda, and marie um, Vicky, Sheila, Melanie, Randy, David, hi uh, Carol, Cheryl, Linda, Marilyn, lovely to see you, April, Wendy, 
Right, so the... Um, oh, it does match my nails. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah, so I have Smoky Slate cardstock here. Uh, it'll be interesting to what colour you might think it is. And the first thing I want to do is get down a little bit of texture in a lightish kind of colour. And then we're going to go from there. I'm going to pop out that one as well, just in case I want to use that. You've only used it once, Jennifer. Well, this is your episode. Hi, Melissa from Florida. Lovely to see you. Okay. So I think I'll go for a tried and tested kind of layout that I've done before where we just go for you know one two three you know and then just do sort of equal spacings so um I'm gonna get this on here like that then I'm gonna turn the stamp around and then do that because I thought it might be that much different but it's obviously not creates that kind of funny little pattern there Turn it around. Now for the sake of editing these afterwards, I'm actually going to try and every time I pick up a new stamp, I'm just going to keep going until I've used it and not stop to chat to you guys because it makes my life difficult when I edit these videos. <laughs> if I stop to talk, I have to do more cutting and chopping. So. I'm, I'm trying to be strict with myself that when I get started with a stamp, I'm just going to keep going and then and then I'll take a break and then chat to you. <laughs> OK, so sorry if I don't look up and uh, find out what you you guys are wittering about. Right. Um, nice twittering, obviously. Now, usually I tend to do the dots a little bit later, but I'm going to do them now because these are light. I'm going to do these quite light. So I'm using, again, the Seaside Spray. And I just want to kind of add a few dots there like that. Right, there we go, that's down. I think we'll do a blue blue bush, shall we go for these lovely blue flowers? Yes, talking and stamping. It's not just the talking and stamping, I can do talking and stamping, it's reading, responding, talking and stamping. <laughs> processing, it's reading what you're saying, processing it, then that's that's what takes the effort. So, um, yeah, I, I will I will respond in a second. So I'm really ink that up. Okay. So because I'm stamping this flower onto colour already, I'm just going full strength onto that section there and then lighter strength onto that section there, although I messed it up a bit there. It's, it, you know, you don't have to be super strict. I'm just creating these little rules so I know roughly where I'm headed. But um, you do it however you want to do it. Now this one, I always find it tricky to figure out which way round it's meant to go. Maybe that way. 
Now, I don't have to be really strict about the rules of this because, after all, we are going to be cutting this up and using it, so, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm just sort of plumping them together just to make it a bit easier for me, really. So I know where I'm headed, but... There we go. It's a very soft rose, that one. Very, very soft. It's very pretty. Yes, this is too big for a card, David. It's going to be cut up. It's called. Um, I'm just stamping a whole sheet and then I'm going to cut it up and use it. Okay, so this stamp, I don't want all of this. I don't want all of these here. So I could mask off each rose, but that's going to be a bit of a fifth. A little bit of a fifth. So I'm wondering... Um, if I could just, I know, I've got a little circle here, if when I go to ink this up, I wonder if I can just ink it up doing that, and then I've already got that natural sort of circle in there, haven't I? No idea where it is, oh well, I'll just, I'll just go for it, oh well, roughly, <laughs> try that again, try and remember where I did it last time. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's better. Oh, that was quite, yeah. Right, so, right, I'll show you what I'm doing. Sorry. Get my head in the way there. So I've left that there. And I'm inking up there. And I'm sort of remembering roughly where I inked up from. And kind of aiming there. That saves having to mask off every single time, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be perfect, does it? Right, and then you can sort of pull back and look for the gaps. Think, oh, what else? What else could I do? So this is a fabulous way to create your own unique paper. You know, it's absolutely unique to you because you know no one can replace or replicate this absolutely perfectly. I mean, you can. Please do try and have a go. If you really like this, have a go trying to do this yourself. Um, but, you know, the great thing is that, you know, every, everybody's would be will be different. So, right, so this is the sort of what I call the thistle stamp. And again, I'm, I'm going in here and not inking it completely up. Um, just to try and get it tucked in quite close to those roses. Now the other option is that you could just, oops, I've got ink on my hands. The other option is that you just remove that now, you don't need that necessarily, and just ink it up from the edge there. Because the reason that I put the curve in there is because of the curved rows. And I'm doing second generation stamping here because this is quite a dark colour so it can it can cope with you know two or even three lots of stamping probably off this one inking up we 
Well, that's it. The irony is it's, it's masking, yes, it's masking off the stamp rather than masking off the stamped image. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've not done that before. You saw it here first, folks. Well, new to me anyway, someone else might have done it, but um, I've not done it that way before. I think when you're creating in this sort of way, you don't want to be spending too much time. I mean, I have, there are videos I've done where I have masked off, um, you know, especially masks cut with die cuts you know quite intricate masks that's a bit different you know it's worth making the effort for but when it's just like a rose that has a little bit of a curve on it then I don't, I don't think you need to be too fastidious in your masking you know I've even masked these off when I've done been doing layering and things but um yeah as I said if you're just having a, a quick little stamp you, you know you don't want to spend loads of time layering masks and things Having said that though, Esther did a nice um, masked thing the other day, if you haven't seen that. Hi Donny from London, oh welcome. I'll say it again, very clear, love the technique with the circle, genius. Oh. Hi stick lady. Right, so there are a few stamps I I haven't used from the set, but it's fine. Um, I'm quite happy to, to leave that for another one. Now, the only thing I want to put into here now is perhaps some more it's darker dots because we've got lighter dots in there. And I'm finding that just putting some darker dots afterwards just looks fabulous. Actually, we also have these little hearts and stars. And I did say I was possibly going to incorporate wording, but I'm not sure it's got the right feel for it. I don't know whether to put some hearts into here or is that does that look a little bit silly? I think stars perhaps would be a bit more. Stars are a little bit more generic, aren't they? You can use it for all kinds of. Uh... Phyllis Stokes. Who's Phyllis Stokes? Can you enlighten me, sticker lady? Oh, I could put some script in there. I could. That would mean reaching for another stamp set. Would you mind me doing that? Do you want me to reach for another stamp set? I tell you what, if I do, I would actually go and grab my Smoky Slate Grey ink and do tone on tone. Yeah, sorry, label me bold and first frost. That's what I've been using so far. Right, let me grab my smoky slate. Um, Right, I think I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm not going to mount it. Oh, it's the first time you've seen me stamp on colour. Ah, I did do it on yellow a few months back. Um, right, I'm deliberately just using my hand for this because I only want little, little delicate um, sections being done. Yes, it's Smoky Slate Ellie. Oh, my camera wants to bounce back up, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just going in there with very little sections. I'm trying to keep it straight. <laughs> I think I should just twist my paper around, make it easier for me. Hi Cindy. It's alright, this is just the first one. I'm, I was late on. 
So I've not got the grey script interfering too much with the florals. I still think it needs something else in it though. You know what, I think I'm going to just do grey dots. Oh, thank you, Anne-Marie. That's so kind of you. Hi, Denise. Right, sorry. Um, what stamp set? Right, I'll go. I'll just go over the stamp sets again. So we've got Label Me Bold. Oops, sorry. Take it back out. Label Me Bold, First Frost. And at the request of people, we're going for a little bit of very Versailles. It reminds you of a nightgown you once had. Excellent. <laughs> I hope you like the nightgown. You obviously liked it enough to mention it. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's really appreciated, that super chat. Thank you so much. Right, so I'm just going in here with some grey dots now, just to add a, a little extra bit of texture. Even on these roses, it can take it. Oh my goodness, my my um my son's watch, well and my daughter and me <laughs> watch a YouTuber called um. Niga Niga Higa. He's a, an Asian American YouTuber, and as a bit of a joke, he he's done a, a sort of like a rip off, or a, he did an impersonation of a, and he did a video of a of a Bob Ross video, a Bob Ross um, painting tutorial tutorial. So for those of you who don't know who Bob Ross is, he he's sadly he's passed away now, but he became very famous for teaching very quick stroke painting and wet stroke painting and they are just phenomenal his videos so we watched this one that was a skit on Bob Ross and, and I knew that my kids hadn't seen and I don't think I I may have not seen it but I'd heard of him and so we've started watching Bob Ross videos <laughs> and it's so bizarre because some of the stuff he comes out with is so like the things I tell you guys <laughs> Like, well, you know, if you fancy putting a bit of yellow, you can. But uh, if you don't like yellow, that's fine. And, um, well, then you mix up a little bit of brown. And, well, if you like it reddy brown or greeny brown, that's up to you. Um, oh, he's, he's and his voice is so relaxing and so, like, soporific. Oh, he could put you to sleep. But he... Um, he's just absolutely brilliant, Bob. Oh, you must... Afterwards, you must look him up. Um... But it, the way he made he so we've just watched one where he's painted um, he painted brush strokes on the canvas to make them look like they would, and then he did this mountain scene which was just like the mountains out of Snowfront or Waterfront, uh, yeah Waterfront, yeah Waterfront, and then he did some trees and he was like, well you you paint a tree and then well you can't have a tree on its own you have to paint another tree with it and then oh let's pop another tree in there. <laughs> It was just so funny. I was like, oh my word, that's just like what I do. But anyway, do have a look. But seriously, if you are interested in learning about art and learning about how to be creative but not have to get too complicated, he is fantastic. I do recommend watching his videos um, because they've put a lot... He, he did a lot for TV and I think maybe even like... I don't know if he did them for video, I don't know. Uh, but they are available on YouTube. I think there's a Bob Ross channel now. You can go and watch watch his stuff. So, uh, yes, a happy little tree. <laughs> yes. You started your painting following him. Oh, Donny. Yes. Oh, hi, Sh Yes, you as well, Cheryl. Yes, that's it, Wendy. No accidents. Just put it. And he and I just love the way he does like the how he he does the trees. They're just brilliant. Oh, he's he's amazing. Right, okay, let's do, I really fancy using this one, and I know I have done it before where I've used this stamp to create um, lines or, or things like that, but I wouldn't mind doing it again. I'm trying to think what would be the best way to do it. 
I haven't done it where I've just done diagonal lines. I wonder... Let me have a think. So always, just give me a second. All right, Esther, take care. My, no, my hair is nearly not as... His hair is pretty impressive, isn't it? Although I have to say, I actually know somebody who lives in my town who has very, very similar hair. Actually, it's probably bigger. Yeah, he's, he's a really cool dude. Oh, no, no, Esther. Apparently he used to unnerve the tree by putting the last tree... I have to watch his. I have to watch more of his videos. Anyway, hi, label. Yeah, I saw you pop in. Have you seen the one with the squirrel in his pocket? No, I haven't. Oh, you guys obviously know way more about him than I do. Happy little tree. Well, it's the way he also said, oh, and underneath these trees, I imagine there are probably some little rabbits and critters running around, you know, and then um, let, have your paintings tell a story. <laughs> just like, OK. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot my notifications. That's my sister messaging me. There we go. Right, let's get on, let's get on. Let's just, let's see if I can do this in five minutes because I need to start practicing my five minute uh, one sheet wonders, don't I? If I'm going to do this, um, I'm thinking of doing a sponsored one sheet wonder, aren't I? So I need to see if I can, if this is doable. So I'm going to set the timer. It's 22.29 right now, so that gives me till... 22.34 let's see if I can do this oh, I love this image it's so pretty it's so detailed okay that's down Right, and then I'm thinking I'm going to keep it very soft, everything very, very soft and light until we're going to bam it with some, you know, roses afterwards. So let's just keep all this under this foliage. I'm going to keep it all nice and gentle and soft and you know, light and airy and, you know, pretty. Oh, night, Carol. Take care. Oh, curly head people really do struggle to find hairdressers that understand curly hair. Do you do the curly girl technique? Steph. Esther's been doing it. If you don't know about it, look it up. Right, so that's that piece of greenery. Um, there is that one too. I'm wondering, should I get soft sea foam in here? Or pear pizzazz. Do you think pear pizzazz might be too dark? Mm. Oh yes, I heard that he had his hair permed. Yeah, um, and that because it became so iconic, he had to just keep keep it keep doing it even though he actually got to the point where he didn't like it i was reading up on him and on wikipedia oh mint macaron let's try mint mac oh sorry i keep knocking the um thing sorry sorry this is my new mint macaron 
Ooh, Ellie. Just look it up. Look up Curly Girl and no poo. Uh, no, uh, no poo technique. Ooh. Anyway, ask Esther. Next time Esther's live. Ellie, message Esther about it. She'll send you to the website. And also there's loads of YouTubers who talk about it as well. It's a way of kind of dealing with curly hair by not using too many chemicals and things because it ends up, well, friends of mine who have curly hair end up buying a lot of extra product and things and um, they really don't have to. They just need to understand how to deal with their hair and then also find a hairdresser who will cut it properly because I think when people don't know how to deal with curly hair, they just kind of... they comb it straight and then cut it off at the bottom and you shouldn't do that you should um curly hair should be cut dry not wet and it should be cut in ringlets oh your hair will be transformed Steph talk yeah if you get into this doing this system you you will discover that your hair is just can be amazing you were weeding <laughs> okay so I think I've done enough of the foliage bit I'm going to go in there now with uh, should we go for a pretty peacock rose this time hi Christine all right I think there's enough ink on here so we're just going to do some nice clusters of these Hi Taylor. It's called the curly girl technique. Who's that? Cheryl. Um, okay, I've just realised I'm well, I'm past the five minute mark now, but then I did stop to chat, didn't I? And I stopped to think about what colour I was going to use. Oh, Vanessa. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so I've got the dots here. And these dots are just great for softening the edges around these round flowers and for covering up boo boos. Happy mistakes, as Bob Ross would call it. Oh, I've just realised in that Niga Higa vid video that he did, the skit of Bob Ross, he says, um, oh, I say, you know, any mistake is a happy mistake, which most of you are. And and it was just like, I mean, obviously it's a little bit of a rude joke um, because, yeah, but it his videos are kind of aimed at kind of teenagers and sort of millennials and stuff like that. So, um it was just like his little aside and kind of like, I'm going to make this a bit funnier. Um, or maybe, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I just added an extra layer of comedy to it. So, yeah, if you want to see his skit, it, it's actually really good because he actually paints a picture in Bob Ross's style. And he teaches in Bob Ross's style, even though he's just taking a Mickey take out of him. And it's just really, really funny. So... 
Hi Evelyn, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, born and raised. Oh. Yes, this is grey cardstock, yes. Hi Misty, you don't need any more flowers, you've got plenty of flowers girl. Right, so if you wanted to go in here and put some of the script, that would look really pretty. Um, I can do that quickly for, for you now. Yes, my nails match it completely unintentionally. Um, there we go, let's make this all romantic. I mean, this would make quite a nice Valentine's card background. Okay, so if, if someone's saying, thinking, Ruth, why aren't you using a block? It's because it's actually a bit easier to get more control and get more of a slightly more random effect by using your hand. Especially now these stamping up stamps really do stick to your fingers. Oh, the hair on there. Right, there we go. Oh my goodness. I could sell this pattern to Laura Ashley herself, yes. There we go. Right, so that's one, two, do one more, and then bedtime. Beddy buys, beddy buys. Okay, I'll tell you one stamp I'm really eager to have a go doing this sort of thing with. And it's the leaf stamp from Very Versailles. Let's see what a difference this makes. Oh, well, I didn't go in and do any word stamping. After I did that whole lecture at the beginning about, oh, I want to incorporate word stamps, I haven't done it. C'est la vie. Never mind. Right, um... I'm going with Smoky Slate first, I think, on this one. Um, Misty, I, you, it's a very grey area. I think it's very tricky because if you scan and share them, then what, what are the other people going to do with them? Do you know what I mean? Um... Yeah, I, I would, I just wouldn't go down that route, personally. I'm just trying to make, make sure this is, this is not straight on. My camera is not quite. Yeah, I just I just wouldn't go down that route. I'd just stick to making originals and using the originals. <coughs> <coughs> oh, clever you, Christine. Oh, shall I just do another vertical stripe one or Oh, I know what I'll do. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, that's fine. You know, that's because I think the whole point of me sharing is just to get you guys to make your own. I, you know, I wouldn't dream of scanning this and sending it to somebody because the whole point is that you have a go yourself. You know, that's that's the, where the real enjoyment comes. So. Um, and yeah, and the whole purpose of sharing it on my group, just to be clear, um, and for those of you who are new to my channel, if you want to join Artful Stampin' Space Facebook group, you can share anything that you create after being inspired by me on there. Um, yeah, so the whole point of my group is actually for you to be inspired, to have a go yourself, and then just share your ideas. It's not really to share the image so that someone else can print it off and use it. It's, um, yeah, you know what I mean. It's, it's the taking part. Um, right, let me have a think here. Okay, I think I might go in with a pair of brassiers. Uh That stamp, the leaf I just used was from a set called Very Versailles, Evelyn. 
it's this one here and it's in the current st main Stampin' Up! catalogue. So if anybody would like a copy of the catalogue and they live in the UK, please do drop me a line. I'm happy to send one out. I've got a few... I've, I've just run out of physical catalogues, uh, but I am getting some very soon. So if you do, you might have to wait a couple of weeks, but I will send one out to you because, um, yeah, somebody from here requested one and... Um, I'm going to have to send it later on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, digital is... If anyone... Now, Stampin' Up! used to do a digital programme many years ago, and some people still have it. Because their angel... I did share their angel policy the other day on my... Artful Stamping Space group and they um, their policy does cover digital images right I'm just going to do a little trick here so that I know roughly where I'm heading to I'm actually going to score where I'm going to cut later so that I can have an idea of where I'm stamping that okay Christine have a good time is that right if one uses a yes you can sell your creations label mail um, they just ask that you use one of their stamps that says stamping up copyright stamping up on the back of your creation what you're not allowed to do is to reproduce these stamps in electronically so if you've hand stamped the item yourself and it's a completed item like it's a proper it's a made card then you can sell it what you're not allowed to do is sell images so you're not allowed to just stamp a whole load of images you know cut them out and sell the images um because that's kind of missing the point really the whole that people buy their own stamps to do that uh but you are allowed to make an item a paper craft item and sell it yeah no it's totally fair um if you'd like to know the you, you just literally go google stamping up angel policy and it will pop up it will be there so this is a british a4 but it would the equivalent would be the american letter size your standard kind of letter size that you have Okay, so I'm just going in now and doing the other sections. Oh, Christine, all the best with that. Hope it goes well. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to keep going. Right, I think I'd like a cluster of flowers in here, this area here. Okay, Cindy, you're picking up your minions. All right. This was Pear Pizzazz on Smoky Slate cardstock. This is uh, Pretty Peacock. Oh no, what am I doing? <sighs> wrong stamp, wrong colour. Okay, let's just go in with the roses first and then... I did do Pretty Peacock last time. So the reason I'm doing the design like this is because this card is going to be cut up into four to make four card fronts. I just find it's sometimes quicker and easier to stamp four cards in one go than it is to be doing four individual ones uh, with this kind of type of design. There 
There we go. So let's get some of these little thistly things in here. Just realised I don't like having too many just doubles, it looks a bit odd. Try to do some triples as well. Okay. I need some leaves in here. We've got all this lovely foliage here. I wonder if there's a way of, if I can just use the tip of this one. I don't really want to get another stamp set out. Someone asked what someone asked about watermarks recently, Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa, I was thinking about your comment about that because I know you said that the other day and I looked at some of the, the photos of things that you were sharing and actually I, I, I hear what you're saying about having something distinct in the background but all someone has to do is just literally crop that photo down and they would have your, your um, you know, your, a card there, if that makes sense. So actually, I my advice would be that if you do use a watermark, make sure it's actually over a portion of your card, not just the background that you used. If you if you are particularly concerned about that, so um, I'm trying to think if I can explain it. Well, well hopefully my what I've just said explains it well enough. Um, yes, because people can I could quite I quite well I have done in the past to be quite honest. I've quite easily cropped out a watermark when I've wanted to use something. Um, but it's very hard to crop a watermark or get rid of a watermark if it's smack bang sort of actually on the card itself. Um, it, at the end of the day, it's just a bit apparent so that people aren't kind of using your photos, you know, your hard work, work for their own purposes really. I mean, I, d I didn't know that there are programs that would get rid of it. I mean, it, it has to be a very sophisticated program because I am, when I put a watermark onto a photo, that watermark and that photo become one in effect. So um, it's not a separate thing that just sits on top on a pro, you know, in the, in the you know, I, the, yeah, like it, it's almost like if I was to take a stamp of, you know, that said Ruth on it and I stamped it on a, on a photograph, embedded it is into it um <clears throat> i mean i don't know if whoever said that to you that that, that you know, there are programs that can get rid of it basically <clears throat> you can crop one crop a watermark off <coughs> excuse me i mean i could quite easily 
crop your photos and no one would know they were yours. Thank you, everybody. Oh, let's not forget the corners. Because otherwise it looks like they're an afterthought. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I've not heard of a program being able to re remove a watermark. I mean, if I sat there with a photo with Photoshop and wanted to remove a watermark, it would it would take me a good 15 to 20, 30 minutes to do it because I'd have to clone. And uh, yeah, if you. Yeah, it, there are things you can do to do it, but it, it would almost it'd be exactly the same as. I don't know, someone having spots on their face and you having to remove the spots off a photograph. It's that kind of thing. Or if a, a, a photo had a crease in it, it's, it's that same process. I can't, I can't see people going to all that bother to do it. But being able to crop a photo is much easier. So that's why I'm suggesting if you do photo... If you do watermark your, photo, your photos of your work, make sure that the watermark comes over a portion of the card that you've made because then... Um, it would be a deterrent but the only the only thing to be well as a car as a stampin up demonstration card maker what i would be concerned about is someone literally lifting my pictures of my cards and pretending that they're theirs to get traffic to go to their blog or their um i don't know their instagram page or something to you know to to sell stamping up products when really I've done the hard work. That would be my concern as a demonstrator. If I was an artist, then yeah, I'd, that's a different concern. But, um, oh, they have, yeah, but, but, you, but to, to actually use that magic remover, it's not a simple process. You still got to open the program, open the picture, you know, and I don't think it's a, at the click of a button because like I said, that, it's part when when I save my image, it's a JPEG. It's it's not a layered JPEG. It's a JPEG. It's it's all one pro, it's all one photograph. So the the program doesn't know the difference between the water, a watermark and a um an, an image un, unless you tell it to. If that makes sense. Unless they've got so sophisticated these days. Um, sorry, who's asking me about what did Wendy? What are you saying? The images belong to Stampin' Up. What do we do with them belong to us? No, Wendy, it doesn't. They don't. But the the image does not belong to us. The image is still owned by Stampin' Up. Yeah, it's it's copyright law. Yeah, if if so, we're allowed Stampin' Up allow us to stamp images. Oops, that was a bit rough, that edge. I should have used the other trimmer. Um, so we're allowed to use the images and make whatever we want, but if we want to sell the products made with their images, we have to abide by their rules. So all they ask is that we put a copyright stamping up stamp on the back of whatever we've made so that, it, you know, that if someone looks at it and goes, ooh, where, you know, what's, where's that image from? You can say, well, it's stamping up. Um, and therefore, like I said earlier, we're not allowed to electronically, like I'm not allowed to then take a photograph of this and then reproduce this electronically and sell it. I can reproduce it and give it as a frat, you know, technically I can just, you know, take a photo of it and print it and maybe give it away. But I'm not allowed to sell it. I'm not allowed to make money from doing that. Please check the angel policy. Um, I did put it on Artful Stamping Space if you want to read it for yourselves. That's my understanding of it. If, um, if you want to actually read it from the Stampin' Up! website itself. Right, so I've been chopping those up while chatting about stuff. 
Um, I may have missed some of your comments. Um, I thought everything we stamped was owned. Yeah, we, we own the stamps. We've bought the stamps. But in terms of the image, stamping up own, own the image, if that makes sense. Um, thank you, Susan. Yeah, of course people can case our work. Yeah. So if you want to go and make this yourself and if you want to blog about it that's absolutely fine it's just polite to you know refer back to me you know as someone who's perhaps inspired you or just say I saw this idea you know I mean I'm, I'm not naive that sometimes in the creative industries two people can come up with a very similar idea at the same time it, it, it's happened in history you know it happens in literature it happens in the art world you know various and science various people throughout the world at one point in history will come up with the same idea it 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 just happens that way so as the whole point with the whole thing with copyright is that if you have created a piece of artwork and a unique piece of artwork you own the copyright to that artwork um so if you want to make money off the thing that you've made that's completely unique, I'm not talking about stamping, I'm talking about, you know, maybe a piece of art, a piece of textiles, whatever, you have to prove that you made it. So I would say you take a photograph of that item, you then um, either photograph it next to a newspaper on that day with the, the, the date, so that's a proof that of the date you made it. You um, also, if you want extra proof, like say you've written a piece of literature, you actually post a copy of that item to yourself and you seal it and you don't open it so that there will be a postmark date on the envelope. So there's, there's little things like that that you can do to prove that you made that item. So if somebody comes along and says, oh no, I made that, you know, I have the right to, to churn off millions of copies of that piece of art and sell it for my profit. You can go, no, you don't have the right to do that because I own it because I can prove it. Here's the photos of me when I made it and this is the date and so on and so forth. So um, people get a bit muddled up with, say, copyright law and trademark law and things like that. Basically, if, if you make anything for the first time, you own it. That's your itch. You've made it. Um, now, proving that someone ha um, has copied you, that's when you go into the realms of legalities and a huge amount of difficulties because you've got to prove that if that person has copied you that they have to stolen your idea. Now, I used to work in the wedding dress industry and um, I worked for a designer, a wedding dress designer, and she said that as long as you could show there were three things different about a dress you hadn't copied a dress. <laughs> so um, now again, that can be really hard to prove, really hard to prove. So it often just comes down to whether or not you really want to stick to your guns and go, you are not stealing my ideas. And if you've got the money to take people to court. So, you know, there we go. Um, I have had more precious things stolen from me. Uh, beautiful, yeah, no, I... Yes, absolutely, Wendy, we put copyright stamping up. If I wanted to make work that I didn't want cloned, it wouldn't be with stamping up. Yes, absolutely, you know. Yes, uh, yeah, music industry. I usually scan my cards, that should be proof enough. Do you make things from scratch? Um, well, no, just scanning them doesn't prove anything. You've got to somehow attach to that scan a date to prove when you made it. So, I'm. I mean, I'm... For the sake of argument, I'm going to presume you've made a, a an individual designed, not necessarily from stamped copyright images, but you have made a card from scratch. Um, yes, you might scan it, but the file hopefully would have a date attached to it. So that would prove that you made it. But, you know, those things can be changed. So you might just need an extra layer of proof if you want to go down that date. Yeah, the scan shows the date. There we go. Okay, so let's get back to stamping. Let's go back to what I've been doing. And then, um, um, yeah, this, I mean, I've been looking into some of these things for a while now, so I could be, you know, misguided on some of my facts. 
so I'm willing to be corrected. But that's my understanding of copyright law. You know, it just needs to be proved, you know, just proof. OK, let's go back then. What's the first one? Sorry, we went ended up talking about all this stuff. Yeah, dates can be ma manipulated. I used to design knitwear and it's just the same. Yeah, exactly, Elizabeth. Are you going to make those and other one sheet wonders from today into cards today? Um, I'm afraid not, Dolly. It's 11 o'clock here in the UK and I, I need to head to bed. But I will do maybe tomorrow. Um, so, the, the, to be honest, I, when I make cards up from one sheet wonders, they are generally not that complicated. I tend to, with something like this, this will literally go onto a card base. That is it. I will literally stick that on there and then possibly put a, a sentiment, stamp a sentiment. But I tend to make a lot of cards now without sentiments and just write what I need to write on the inside. If I'm selling this at a craft fair, I now put a notice at my craft fair that says, if you'd like a sentiment, please ask me and I will take my um, sentiment stamps, some ink pads and a block, and I will offer to stamp people for people a sentiment if they want it because it's just easier for me to do it that way rather than people going oh I need you know looking for specific words and things like that so generally my one sheet wonders do not have a lot of extra lots of extra playing with them um, occasionally they do uh, as in the example uh, for example one that I did a while back and I made that what's oh, that big one with a big flower on it there was one sheet wonder I did and, and I did do some extra playing, you know, with layers and things like that. Okay, but even then that's like a whole sheet there. And then I just added these extra little bits. Uh, that one's just a smaller piece and then I put pieces behind it. I think because I tend to make very detailed one sheet wonders or stamped sheets, I don't end up having to put much more... On them. Um, a while back I did do a video about how to chop up one sheet wonders so if you just scroll back on my history it's something like 16 ways to chop up a one sheet wonder that video is really helpful um, if I remember I'll try and link it I'll link it to this video um, but there we go I wouldn't have chosen that base but it looks fat oh the turquoise no I literally just pulled it out I didn't I didn't really I was trying to find a blue but um, and what, oh, I'll tell you what I really like doing is, is just looking at different card bases and all the different looks you can get. Like if, whether you have a contrast or... See, look, see the difference between that one and that one. There we go. Yes, they're very vintage looking, aren't they, Maureen? Okay, so that's that one that I have already cut up. So that's literally cut that up into four. And the reason also I try not to give out specific details or measurements is because you just use whatever size card stock you have in your area. So I know in Australia and the UK we have A4, in America you have letter. So stamp up your papers, make a card base from half a sheet, whatever that measurement is, and then just cut down your sheet into a little bit less than a quarter. All right, so it's just basically half, but with a bit of a margin cut off. And then that will fit then onto your your card base for whatever region you come from, whether you're in America or Europe or Australia or wherever. Okay, so I don't I don't really give out measurements. It's, you know, you can figure that bit out yourself. Okay, so that that was the first one. So that was the flowers are in blueberry bushel. The these gorgeous leafy foliagey things are in pretty peacock. The background fuzzy stamp was in seaside spray, and the dotties and stuff in seaside spray, and a little bit of the grey, which I then came in with the script stamp that I did in the grey as well. Okay. Is the lovely star one sheet wonder, not the plan? Yes, it's still on there, Wendy. And I've done a speeded up version for you as well. It's I've just recently released that. I think that was last week. So this was the second one. 
So this was stamped with that lovely image from First Frost, which I seem to have lost. Oh, here it is. So that lovely one there. Started off with that in grey, then added more in a blue and pale green there. And then uh, added flowers, excuse me, and then the dots, and then the script. And that's it for that one. That was very satisfying to do. I spent two sessions cutting up all of my SDU colours, loving having them at hand, inspire. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, it's it is there, Wendy. It is there. Um, message me if you if you want me to find it for you. I wouldn't have chosen that base card, but it looks fab. Yes, this pale grey is very, very sophisticated. Very sophisticated. I can't say sophisticated normally, I have to go sophisticated. Right. Yes, they would make nice Christmas cards. I, yeah. Frosty Christmas cards. Yeah. Um, uh, what did you... What did Label say? You're smitten. <laughs> I think Christine's just asking how you are. Uh, you're off to bed. Nosta, yes. Night, Wendy. Take care. Yes, you're right. Smitten means, um, well, it kind of means in awe, but it also means, um, well, you'd kind of almost describe like if you're in love as well, like. You know, but it can mean you're very taken with something. It, it means it can mean slightly different things in different contexts, but you used it absolutely in the right context, that word. Yeah. Your English is definitely better than my German. Well, I don't, I can't speak any German, so. I'm, I'm, ama I'm, in, I'm amazed at all these people who are just such fabulous linguists. And they speak all these different languages. I'm very grateful. Um... Does Stampin' Up sell empty stamp cases? Yes, they do. They sell the clear, these ones, the thin ones. And these are great for putting uh, pencils. What do I put in here? Oh, my, Christ, you know, uh, gems, they all go in here. Yeah. You're very taken with those cards. Yes, label. I'm teaching you all the words now. <laughs> Uh, and then they also sell the double, you know, the thick one. They sell that one. And then they sell a half size thick one, which is useful for putting reinkers in. I have my, re my in colour reinkers in those. And I have my reinkers in family or family style. Oh, I know what. I'll just show you, show you and then you'll know. Um, there we go. Right. So I have my reinkers in. So those are the neutrals, those are the brights. And then um, my in cut these are my in colours and they fit perfectly there. Hi Jane. That's alright, don't worry. Yeah, so these are fabulous. I don't know, I don't know, I've got dirt on that one. Uh, what else do I use them for? Oh my cleaner! That that's such oh that, that other that clear one is for my my cleaner. So my stamp cleaner goes in there. Um, oh, for tools. So this one has tweezers in. This one has various gems and things. Oh no, these are little my sticker my little epoxy stickers. These are retired ones. So I keep all my retired ones and then if I'm doing a class and, you know, I just need all the green ones or all the pink ones or whatever, I just take them out when I need them. Or if I'm doing a project or whatever. Yeah, these are handy dandy. Super duper handy dandy. Those larger boxes, do they have a size like the old? No label, no. They got rid of those a few years ago. All our stamps now come, you know, very much in, in these these ones 
and I have to say it's so much easier to store. So if there's like a really big stamp set, they you know you'll get maybe get two of these. And in the UK, none of the stamps are sold on wood anymore. Only in America you can buy the bigger block, the bigger stamps on blocks. But generally, everything comes clean for mounting onto clear blocks now. So it's still a lot of the stamps are still red rubber. We have the ones in photopolymer, you know, the clear ones. Um, but yeah, it's all very streamlined now. These are really helpful. So, do you order Stampin' Up products label? Do you have a demonstrator, or are you a demonstrator yourself? I I never. I I don't remember asking you. I may have asked you, but I don't remember asking you. <clears throat> Right, so if there's anybody on here who's in the UK and would like a catalogue, please drop me a line. You can always go and have a look at the online shop. Uh, the links are below. Just click on shop. Have you done a Power of Hope One Sheet Wonder? No, I haven't yet, but I can show... Ooh, if I can find it. I can show you a sneak peek of a card that I'm going to be doing at a class and I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do this next week. Are you ready? Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? No, I'm a solitary figure. Ah, okay. Well, you can you can order Stampin' Up! products through me if you'd like to because um, I'm set up to receive this from, from Germany. But um, I've, And of course, there are German demonstrators as well if you'd like to order from them, but I'd be happy to have your custom. Those larger boxes, do they have the size? No, oh, no, I've read that bit. Right, who wants to see this? Little, little sneaky peeky, little sneaky peeky. Ta -da! <laughs> I think my comments are a little bit behind. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I had a little play with it, doing some masking and with the mountains and everything. And, 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 and I'm really excited to show you, and I will do this on another One Sheet Wonder, but I'm really excited to show you I've made a bit of a breakthrough with this stamp. You know, I was saying that I'm really struggling with it because I don't like how it's, oops, I don't like how it's very negative and positive. I'm going to show you what I... A technique I have done plenty of times with other stamps, but just it took me till last week to figure it out. Um, just put it in the middle. Like, I did it the other day with the daisy. Look, stamp, and then shift it around a bit. Oops, maybe about there. And then stamp again. I'm so much more happier with it now. Look, you see the difference? Oh, really? Label mail. Ah. That's interesting. Um, da, da, da. See? You know? Now, you, theoretically, you could even stamp other... Let's see. Well, another colour underneath it. That would be interesting. Ooh, what about green? Yeah, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Well, it's because you've got these sort of darker filled in images. Sorry, can you see that? You've got these darker images, darker petals here. Those are the positive. And then you've got then these sort of ones here. Um, so I don't know. You can you can play with it. You could probably do more than twelve and six o'clock. You could probably do some other configurations of it. Ooh. 
Ooh, I quite like that. There we go. So if anyone's got that stamp set, have a play. Two-toned, even. Yeah, I, as I said, I was really struggling with it as it was. So I'm really glad to find a way to make it work. And then with these little flowers, I've stamped, teamed it up with Thoughtful Blooms. And I stamped that tiny little flower as a little cluster and it, it can't you can't really see it so I will probably change the colours up a little bit um, to make it a bit more obvious but um, yeah and then I stamped the little flowers to make a dress pattern there as well so which set was what sorry this is thoughtful blooms this is positive thoughts this one here Amory take care Christine yeah, it works well, doesn't it, Barbie? Uh -oh. Is that right, Amory? Hi, Roberta Guguen. Gu 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 oh, I'm so sorry. I probably completely messed up your surname. Roberta Guguen. Gu Gu Guguen. Guguen. Guguen from new brunswick canada i'm a little late but i love what you're doing thank you so much for stopping by and saying that that's very help that's very kind of you so if you're watching on the replay it's lovely to hear from you as well let me know what you liked about the different sheets and um and if you want to know ways that you can support what i do the very least you could do is just give me a thumbs up all right, the very least you can do. Give me a thumbs up and uh, if you want to go so far as to subscribe to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe and then you can be kept in touch with me a bit more. And then if you want to go further to support me financially, if you're not in the UK and can't shop with me, then I do have a PayPal button and Super Chat button. And please share my videos please share them with anybody who you think might enjoy my style of stamping my style of teaching and just fancies a bit of a natter on my lives really because as you can see it's a bit of a fun community we all we sort of all get in here and chat and you know have a good time so um please do share the die set for these stamp sets are great oh yes positive thoughts this one now has a die set that's coming out on the 4th of February. So these have all got dies to match them. I haven't ordered them myself, but um, they look very good. And I've seen a few people create, already create with them. So, um, oh, excuse me. So there we go. Oh, uh, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you so much. Well, do share. And if you... Also, um, I am on Pinterest, so another way to support me is by following me on Pinterest and repinning some of my my designs. Um, I also noticed there's somebody pinning my YouTube videos, which is wonderful. Somebody's been pinning those, so uh, there we go. That's great. So lots of love to you all. Thank you for stopping by, and um, I hope to see you again maybe tomorrow evening, and we'll make some cards out of some of those One Sheet Wonders. Okay? Take care for now, guys. Bye! You're welcome, Jackie. Bye. Good night.